good morning. Uh, today I'm going to present some preliminary analysis from my PhD project that hopefully with your input school improve a lot. Um, we are aimed to estimate and to update the burden of Chagas disease in Colombia. As you probably know, this is a um, tropical disease which is mainly um, um, mainly endemic in Latin American countries because the transmission is driven by vectors that are only present in, in, in Latin America. And it is estimated um, globally a burden of 800,000 dollars and most of the burden is in, in Latin American countries with about 9 million cases. In Colombia there are no specific estimates, only there are a few estimates from the Pan American Health Organization, which are main on experts' judgments in 2006, and it is estimated about 400,000 infected people, uh, of which a third, a third of them already have developed cardiomyopathy. Chagas disease is a very complex uh, disease because there is this is transmitted not, not only by vectors, but only by transfusions, uh, oral transmission, and congenital transmission. However, the, uh, the epidemic is mainly driven by vectors, and these vectors are endemic in very poor settings in rural areas, mainly, where they are able to domiciliate in these type of houses where they transmit uh, to, to the people who live inside. And the main control measure is basically insecticide spraying in order to eliminate the, the vectors. However, there are about a hundred of reservoirs. That's why the, the eradication of the disease is not uh, possible. And only the, the control of the transmission at the domiciliary scale is, is, is suitable. The disease um, is complex as well. There is an acute stage, which is m most of the times is um, asymptomatic. And after 10 to 20 years, people develop the chronic stage, presenting cardiomyopathy, which is the, the main complication that gives the, the burden of disease and also megaviscerous. This is a problem because in acute phase, um, is not the, the surveillance system doesn't capture the cases in acute phase, so that the 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 main the, the main point when we can measure the the disease is in a chronic phase when we don't really know when the per, the people got the infection. So it's it's very difficult to to estimate incidence and uh, because of this risk. The control, as I said before. Vector control is the main control strategy. However, also um, screening in blood banks has been implemented since the 19th in several Latin American countries. And uh, a third strategy is starting to, to gain some support, diagnosis and treatment, because um, uh, the, the, at the moment there are not good offers for, for, for diagnosing and especially for Mm, reducing the complications in the, in the chronic phase. These strategies in, in Latin America, the, the control, the vector control strategies have, sorry, had started in, in the 90s, mainly in, in, in different countries in Latin America. And this is Colombia, where we focus our interest. It is starting in about 1997. So the methods are basically um, a systematic review of, the, of all the zero surveys that have been developed in Colombia since 1990. Um, some of them are not really published. We did a manual search at the Ministry of Health and um, province levels to, to find the, all the surveys related with Chagas disease. We classify them according to a minimum number of, of people included in each number of 400 people. And we collected 35 zero surveys that involved about 52,000 people in the 14 endemic regions, which in Colombia are called uh, departments. 
we then uh, analyze them with as pool data at the national level, then at the departmental level, and then we divide it into different risk, in risk population, indigenous, rural, and urban areas. We used the force of infection models because they allowed us to estimate from prevalence to go um, backward to estimate the force of infection, which is the rate at which susceptible population acquire infection. Um, an individual acquires infection in a susceptible population. And we compared three models, a basic one that is not, that we, which, at which the force of infection is constant and the prevalence uh, varies according age. A second model um, in which we are allowing a change is the force of infection at a specific point in time. This point of time is is part of the estimates. And in, is the, in this model is basically because it is known that for Chagas disease, con vector control in one year or two years can really um, produce a, a, a drastic drop in the force of infection. So in, with this model, we are trying to find a specific point in time when the intervention could um, produce the, the drop in the force of infection. And a third model, which is a time-dependent model in discrete time. In this model, we are allowing the force of infection to vary annually from the reconstruction of the, these cohorts that we do through the, the prevalence the age structure um, service. Then, um, because of so, some of the tests that are used for Chagas disease, a change in, or in, in terms of sensitivity and specificity. So we adjusted the estimates given these, these, um, the, these values. The fitting of the model, we did this with a Bayesian approach, basically with Markov chain Monte Carlo and Metropolis Hastin algorithm. And then we compared the, the variance information criteria of the three models, and we choose the one that fit the data the best based on the slower, the lower value of the IC. At the moment, we have done just a basic disease model when we start with susceptible, pe susceptible population that are exposed to a force of infection, and then this population become infected, then at a rate A, they become um, infected with moderate hair failure, and then at the rate B, they become infected at, um, they, they become uh, compli complicated with uh, several stages of the heart failure. And we use some parameters from the literature. Um, as a result, uh, for the national level, as you can see here, these are the, the plots for some of the countries. The, there is a high heterogeneity between regions, so the force of infection varies a lot depending on the region. And at a national level, what, what we can see is that the force of infection has been decreasing since the early 1990s, so that the predictions for 2000 for the prevalence are higher than for 2010, showing somehow an effect of the control interventions. But when we divide this into different population, what we find is that mainly indigenous community, they have a very high force of infection. This is a force of infection that gives uh, an incidence of about 6% per year, so that the prevalence only reach, uh, almost reaches uh, 100% at 80 years old. Whereas in other rural areas, the force of infection at the equilibrium point is, is a lot lower. Um, so some of the possible explanation of the results is that in indigenous communities, the, the, the conditions, the living conditions are a lot worse compared with rural areas. And these results are very comparable with others from the Bolivian Chaco community, indigenous community that also shows this profile in the prevalence. 
In other rural areas with history of interventions, we can see how the force of infection um, dropped in a specific, uh, went down in a specific point in time, so that the prevalence is estimated in, for people from zero to 15 years old in, at zero percent, and then um, it reaches about 50 percent at 80 years old. And in urban areas, we know that in urban areas it's not possible the, or not likely the, the, the transmission of Chagas disease. However, there is a constant migration from rural to urban areas in the last 30, 40 years in all Latin American countries. So that we are still estimating a, a prevalence in, in urban areas. And this is important because even though the transmission is mainly in rural areas, probably the highest number of, of people are in urban areas. Um, here you can see how um, we are estimating the number, this corresponds to the number of, um, of cases, the total number of cases, and with the model we are um, estimating also the number of severe cases and mild cases. And you can see how the, the prevalence of the different um, stages of the disease has been reduced in the last year. This is, these are estimates for 1990 and 2010. With these results, then we are trying to estimate the burden of, of disease based on the um, GBD 2010. And um, so we, at the moment we are trying to get the predictions for each region. And I am showing you this. This is an example of one of the regions. What is the estimate since 1990 and the, somehow the prediction until 2000? 15 and how the burden, this is in Dallas, how the burden is, is going down slowly. Um, we, at the moment, we, we have found the average force of infection by departments, endemic departments in Colombia, we share them, and we classify them according to, to this parameter. And, um, but we, we are still, this is a, still an ongoing research our future work is basically to extend the estimates for the whole country, including the 14 endemic regions. And then, based on the basic model that I showed at the beginning, to extend this to include some interventions in terms of diagnosis and treatment and to see how it will affect the burden of disease. As conclusion, basically these catalytics models allow us to estimate changes in the force of infection over time. The force of infection is highly affected by vector control interventions, and this is something that hasn't been done before. The, the, the estimates for burden of Chagas disease has been made mainly on the reports from the Pan American Health Organization, and those are uh, done by you know, expert judgment and, and, and not, not necessarily are, are the best. Um, given that Chagas hair complications are evident over 20 years after the infection, the disease burden is not immediately reduced after control. And there is a high heterogeneity in the force of infection in endemic regions, which varies according to controlled interventions. Thank you.